Hey guys, welcome to the 10 at 10 here on Mr. Maple. We appreciate you tuning into the Mr. Maple Show. We love providing daily gardening content for you guys. And our 10 at 10s are typically one of our most popular videos of the week. I'm Matt. And I'm Tim. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and sign up for our weekly emails on mrmaple.com. Today we're talking about 10 of the 20 trees getting listed. If you want to figure out the other 10, make sure you sign up for our weekly emails. You'll get an email at 9 a.m. with the full listing of the 20 trees. Guys, thanks to our international community, we can't ship to you guys, but we have a huge community that hops in that live chat. If you're not already, participate in the live chat for these videos. They air at 9 a.m. Eastern, daylight savings time, and they give you a preview of that 10 at 10. Now these sizes are indicative of what we offer right now during 2022. If you're watching this video a year later, our sizes may be slightly larger or slightly smaller than what you're seeing right now. We always like to let people know that up front in case you're watching this a couple years from now. But we've got a great 10 at 10 lineup for you. And let us know in the comments section where you're watching from today. Now, some of these plants, like we'll start out here with Acer Japonicum Indian Summer. They're not going to be any larger than this. Yeah, it's hard to beat this. We've actually talked about this in a few videos. We were kind of laughing, but those might not have even aired yet. So we'll repeat some of our same material. This one's one of Brian's favorite Japanese maples. Uh, we love Ace Japonicum Indian Summer. One of the main highlights on this one is that it has a plethora of color changes. And that means a lot to us. And this has a medium to large size leaf. But the thing that's really unique about this one is we'll have a lot of leaves that are yellow, a lot of leaves that are orange, and a lot of leaves that are red on the same plant. So it'll create this crazy contrast across itself, which gives itself some just crazy fall color that's really unique to Indian summer. You're gonna love this one. Uh, it's a great uh, Ace Japonicum, not often seen in America. It's an introduction from Holland, again, selected for having a ton of different fall colors all at once. And uh, great sizes in this in our one gallons right now, guys. These are huge. Give some protection from the hot afternoon sun to really get the largest leaf out of Indian summer. And that's true with any of the Acer Japonicum types. What do we got here? Oh, Uncle Ghost. This yeah. one's another one that's gonna sell out pretty quickly. Yeah, next up here on the table, we've got Uncle Ghost, uh, part of that Ghost series. Check yeah. out our full video on the Ghost series. We've got a whole uh, deep dive there on the Ghost series by our friend Talon Buckholtz. Matter of fact, while you're at it, check out our entire podcast we did with the ghost father himself of all these, Talon Buckholtz. We got him in there and did a whole sit down interview with legendary nurseryman Talon Buckholtz. And Uncle Ghost is one of my favorite ghosts. It's rarely seen in the nursery trade. It's a little more rare than some of the other ones. Uh, great plant to be growing though. Yeah, it's a good mid-sized upright ghost series type. And this one here really has some nice pink purples in the early spring. Really unique color with its reticulation. And it really has more of that semi-pendulous habit where you see an upright tree, but the side branches often have a slight cascade to it. We were recently at a garden talk in Charlotte and somebody said, you keep saying reticulation and what does that mean? And what we mean is that each vein in this leaf has that intense etching to it. So it looks like you sketched over every single vein in the leaf structure. It gives it a really interesting approach to variegation and some of the coolest variegated Japanese maples you can grow are reticulated. Uncle Ghost, always popular though. Give it protection from the hot afternoon sun to hold that reticulation longer throughout the summer. Often this one here will have that really good pink red kind of spring color, but then during the summer, it'll fade to a green with really, really bright green uh, etching in the variegation. I mean, really amazing plant. Really goes to some really nice reds in the fall, as you can see here. We're hanging on to our last remnants of leaves right now, but you can see these are some excellent size one gallons. We go from a ghost to a new ghost. Yeah, next up here we've got Blonde Beauty. <laughs> Love this plant. We often refer to this as a new ghost because it is a reticulated type that doesn't have that ghost name appearance, uh, ghost name in the name, but it still has that same reticulated variegation that many of the ghost series have. Yeah, this one leaves out a nice bright yellow. It's an underrated fall color too. It's a fiery red in the fall. I actually have a good uh, six to seven footer that had great color this, this fall. I actually put some photos on our website recently from that, but it's a good bold red, really nice upright form, lovely spring yellows though. It really brings the yellow and it's a great addition to the reticulated forms because of that bright yellow it has. Blonde Beauty is a showstopper. You're gonna love this one in your landscape. It's gonna pair really nicely with either additional ghost series you may have 
or some of those new ghosts like Nebula or Waveleaf are gonna look really spectacular around this one. Yeah, that creamy yellow green leaf in the spring with the green etching reticulation throughout it really makes this thing pop. But to increase those yellows, push your limits with this one with sunlight. And you're gonna get more of those blonde highlights across this plant. And that's where this tree gets the name of Blonde Beauty. It's because those blonde highlights this tree can get late spring to early summer. Again, this is one that you're gonna to have to push into more sunlight mm -hmm. to really get those blonde highlights to their fullest. Another fun one by our friend Talon Buckholtz there. And again, if you give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun, that's gonna hold that reticulation longer throughout the season for that plant. Love Acer Palmatum Fireball. This is always a classic. We did a goofy video where we, we uh, dress up. Well, we don't dress up. <laughs> hey, we Brian, throw, catch. Yeah, I throw Brian a fireball. No fireballs were harmed in the filming of this video. He caught it perfectly. There, there was no fumble. It was all passed off. But we did a uh, kind of a Mario spoof there, and they play some Mario music while I throw Brian a fireball. Yeah, amazing plant. Love the fact that this is a dwarf red and then goes to that bright, fiery red in the fall where it gets the name of fireball. Yeah, this one's one of our most highly sought after dwarf red forms. Again, this being a broom, it has a tighter, denser habit. I would say it's one of the most picked up bright red brooms of all, of any of the red brooms. It's really showy, makes a great container garden plant. Uh, you'll hear me say this a lot with our dwarfs, but this makes a great tree to add a deciduous splash into a conifer garden. You can't go wrong with fireball because you're gonna add some of the most premium peak colors possible you know, in there in the small landscape. It's great in any small spaces or even containers. This was found as a witch's broom for our good friend Dave Rocade, and that chance witch's broom turned into fireball. Yeah, and he was going to visit our friend Nancy Vermeulen and found this one, and just a really cool plant. All right, should we tell him about this one? We could have left this one a mystery. Okay, you picked him, fans. We got another picked him for you. Acer picked him Kamasaki Nishiki. Really cool plant. This one's very cutting edge. It's a new one from Japan. Great sizes on this one also. Um, yeah, I can't say enough fun things about variegated pictums. They're some of my favorite plants to be growing. These are grafted onto Acer Truncatum. They're exceptionally heat tolerant and durable. Now you definitely want to give some of these some late afternoon protection for their best colors in the deep south, but they don't burn. They're exceptionally durable. They're exceptionally humidity tolerant and some of my favorite plants from Japan. Now, Kamasaki Nishiki is a pretty unique plant in the fact that you'll get a lot of variegation across part of the leaf, and then part of the leaf might be green. And so you get a unique style where the variegation is really the contrast between that and the green part of the leaf makes this tree appear extra variegated. I mean, it's got some really nice white sand dusting variegation, then with some swirls of green in it. You know, I think of this when I think about visiting Yanosan at World Maple Park. Uh, so many fun pictums he had there in that garden. And pictums are some of my favorite plants to look at in Japan. They're very cutting edge. We're always looking for more understock for these. Uh, there's a shortage sometimes on understock for these. And they're very tricky to graft. When you graft an Acer pictum, they actually make kind of a milky substance come out. So they can be a little bit tricky depending on which seasons you're grafting them in. So production can be tricky. We've kind of, kind of got it down pat here at Mr. Maple a little bit. We're doing better with that. But uh, love Acer pictums. We're going to be offering more forms. You're not going to want to wait on these Kamasaki Nishikis. They don't last long in stock. It's a very rare form that is highly sought after. So, you know, I do advise you. Tim says a lot in our videos, but I'll let you know on this one. Adding it to cart doesn't hold it. You actually have to check out. These will sell out pretty fast. And that's finished the checkout process. You know, I was describing this as a plant that's variegated white with a little bit of green. It's probably a better way to describe it as a white plant that's variegated green. Right. Because it's got way more white than it does with with the green we really worked out a boring 10 at 10 for you guys here today from, <laughs> from all this crazy stuff now we're back to another crazy plant from japan naka komodo weeping and guys we brought these back in a giant size for you yeah we definitely got some large one gallons on these this is an amazing plant matt and i had the privilege and the pleasure of going and seeing the original naka komodo weeping it's over 400 years old in japan and it's an amazing plant that really hooks down cascades and weeps with a little bit of almost a contorting habit. Yeah, very interesting plant. We found out now that this one's kind of the granddaddy of many of them. Jiro may have been a seedling from this, and then Ryusin a seedling from that. Uh, so it's kind of the grandparent to all those weeping forms from Japan. Uh, really unique plant. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Naka Komodo weeping. It was originally just being called the National Treasure, National Treasure of Japan. And I've seen it, uh, it I think it was originally brought to the, the United States with the name Treasure. Uh, really cool plant though. 
Naka Komodo Weepin is the right name on it. It's actually the name they have there at the temple in Japan. Um, one of my favorite plants I've ever seen. Now, one of the cool things about this one is this one, as it ages, really develops a hook to it. So it's a little more hooking than many other of the weeping styles. So you'll get a lot of just sharp hooks on this. And a really amazing plant. When we got to go visit it, it was in perfect fall color. Right. And so it was just yellows infused with oranges and reds. I mean... So, some things you read there say 600-year-old in some of the literature. Uh, from what we could tell at the temple, conservatively, you could say this tree is easily over 400 years old. The stakes that were holding it up are dated at over 200 years old. At some point this winter, I'm going to really break down and do a full video on this one for you. Probably we'll just have to jump in the podcast room and then throw in clips from our trip to see it. But uh, we definitely want to get that out to you at some point. A, a really nice deep dive on Naka Komodo weeping. Yeah, Naka Komodo weeping, an amazing plant, an amazing history. I mean, this is a plant that's one of the national treasures of Japan, one of the oldest Japanese maples on record cultivar selections. It's got a cultivar name on it of mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. And some giant sizes, guys. These are already dropping leaf for the most part. There's a few stragglers hanging on, uh, you know, but these are every bit of Gosh, almost two and a half feet wide, two and a half feet tall, maybe even more than that. Yeah, some fantastic sizes on those Naka Kamado weeping. Next, we have Acer Palmatum Dissectum, Lemon Chiffon. Ah, this is a fun one. Uh, I believe it was an introduction from Red Maple Nurseries. Really cool coloration on this one. Now, this one's going to leaf out in the early spring with some interesting hints of kind of lime green to bright yellow over top of that green new growth. It actually has an excellent yellow, bright yellow fall color also. Has a very excellent weeping habit. Red Maple Nurseries introduced so many amazing plants. Go check out our videos on Red Maple Nurseries and their introductions. He's got an amazing, uh, Richard Wolf or Dick Wolf, he's got an amazing collection of plants. And Lemon Chiffon is one we really like here that he introduced. Yeah, this one's a great candidate for a container garden or small area garden. Typically three to four feet tall by three to four feet wide, even in 10 years, making it a very small weeper. This makes a great pairing with any of your classic lace leaves like Waterfall or Tamukiyama or Crimson Queen. It's really going to add something different there in the landscape. You plant this with an orangeola and both are going to look amazing. Yeah, the colors that this pushes off with that yellow green to yellow new growth and with orangeola pushing off a lot of that orange red to red. I mean, the color contrast is going to be pretty crazy. Lemon Chiffon is such a great plant to use out in the landscape and garden. You may have to give this some protection from the hot afternoon sun and hotter climates, but this plant really gives you some nice yellow green colors. Love what this one can do in the landscape because you know I love the color yellow. Now we move on from one Dick Wolf introduction to another. Next up, we've got a Makawa family plant that we're happy to be bringing back. This one's Acer Palmatum Tattoo. Yeah, Tattoo, one of the slowest growing varieties of the Makawa Yatabusa family. Tightly layering, I mean, deeply more divided leaf with some really nice serrated edges. Guys, you've heard me say it before, Tattoo, always popular. It's an introduction named after the guy from Love Boat. <laughs> He's just messing with you. An amazing plant though. We've often joked there's another type out there with the name Tattoo on it. And it's like a Mirasaki Kiyohime type. We, we call that one bad tattoo sometimes. <laughs> because it is not the correct tattoo. It's not this version of Tattoo. But this version of Tattoo is amazing. It's a great container plant, great for small spaces. One of the slowest growing Makawa Yetsubusa types. With that serrated edge, it gives it a unique texture and a lot of ruffle to the leaf. The leaf often kind of curls downward, almost like a claw-like effect. I think Tattoo was in Gilligan's Island. That's what it was. I keep mixing it up. <laughs> Again, he's just messing with you. But you can correct him in the comments. We appreciate all the comments. <laughs> it's great for the algorithm when you tell everybody the wrong TV show. But this is a great container plant. I know Rudy Dex gave an amazingly large one to NJ Acer in uh, Ed Shin in New Jersey. Uh, he's got an, one of the biggest tattoos that I've ever seen. And awesome plant, real regal appearance to it too. It kind of has a little bit more of a ruffled leaf than Makawa Yetsubusa. And again, a much slower grower than Makawa Yetsubusa. One of the smallest plants in that Makawa Yetsubusa family. Highly sought after. We've got some great sizes in them here today. Uh, they're slow growing. So one in Tim's si the one in Tim's hand and even this one, they can be two to three years old before they even get this size. And that's in a landscape, that's in a greenhouse condition. Uh, it's a very compact, small grower. Great one, like I said, for containers, conifer gardens, small spaces in the landscape. The, this is a great plant that goes to some really nice shades of red, that's bold red, to deep red in the fall. So you get some great color contrast from the dark green that you get during the spring and the summer to that red fall color. 
So next we've got an, another yellow plant, Acer Palmatum Anirene. Yeah, I've had a lot of people asking about when this one's gonna be back in stock. I always try not to give away too much on our upcoming tenant tens, but I know a lot of you guys are waiting on Anirene. This is that variegated form of summer gold. So this one has a lot of the great qualities you like about summer gold, but with a ruffled border and kind of pink variegation in the early spring. I've had pinks to oranges fading to a cream. It is super colorful and that ruffled border makes this one look so elegant. It's one of my favorite leaf shapes of any Japanese maple. I've got a big anirene in my garden. We'll have to focus on it next spring and do a full cultivar highlight on this nice size specimen I have. But uh, it's gonna have everything you love in summer gold, but in variegated ruffled form. <laughs> I know. Make sure you push the sunlight with this one so that springtime, when you have that variegated edge to it, you can really get some of those more picked up colors like those oranges and pinks like Matt was talking about. But when you have that ruffled edge in orange and the interior of the leaf in yellow, I mean, that color contrast is superb. And Irene is one of those plants that I like to put in more sunlight. Once it's established like its, like its parent, there's a variegated sport off of, it can handle full sun. And it you know, may show some burden in the early stages of getting established, but put it out there, let it get established. If you're not, if you're a really hot zone, you may have to give it some protection from the hot afternoon sun. But an amazing plant to add a lot of yellow out in the landscape. It's yellow and it's variegated. So if you're a variegated plant lover, if you're a yellow plant lover, you get both with anirene. It's pretty amazing. You know, when I was walking you over the plants from your side of the table, but you see how your little brother does you. I gotta come <laughs> down here and grab them. But that won't stop me from getting excited to talk to you about Acer Palmatum Higasiyama. We've got some huge plants right now of Higasiyama. Honestly, a lot of these are ready for three gallons. They're yeah. big plants. Uh, get these before we can pot them up, guys. This is one of the OG first, kind of that reticulatum style uh, variegation. It has a swirling variegation. Uh, it's been one well, that's been around for a very long time. Yeah, I love this one. Before I had Makaoya Tabusa here at the nursery, this was my favorite Japanese maple. It was one of the very first Japanese maples that dad started carrying and the pink reticulation in that mm -hmm. is so unique. It's actually a different style of reticulation than many of the Ghost series. Right. I mean, I often would consider this like a Higasiyama type. Mm -hmm. And I know it's Higasiyama, but it's very different from the reticulation you get out of many of the Ghost series. And in the springtime, you want this to leaf out very slowly. But if you get this tree to leaf out slowly, you don't over fertilize in the early spring as this plant's leafing out, you can get some amazing pink popcorn-like variegation where it just sort of curls up like popcorn with pink and white veining. I mean, it, or green veining on pink and white. It's spectacular. It's one of my favorite Japanese maples, what this does in the springtime. And then give her some protection from the hot afternoon sun for it to hold longer through the season. Mm. But then some great fall colors. I would say one of the better variegated plants for bonsai too. Bonsai guys love this one because it has a smaller overall leaf. It is quite vigorous. This one typically puts on over a foot to a foot and a half of growth a year. We've got some excellent sizes in this right now. Uh, really almost too big to ship. So grab these before we decide to start potting them up. These are amazing. Uh, Acer Palmatum Higasiyama, always a popular one here at Mr. Maple. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this 10 that we're talking about today. This is 10 of the 20 trees getting listed. Again, if you want to figure out the other 10, make sure you're signed up for our weekly emails. You'll be able to find out ahead of time. You know, at 10 a.m., these will get listed at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on today's 10 at 10. So you can get on there and check out really quickly with the plants that you're wanting. Guys, we appreciate you following us and subscribing to the Mr. Maple Show. Please continue to do so. You know, sign up to get notified when we add new videos. It's a great way to get notified. We're adding a video every single day at 9 a.m. Our Sunday episodes air at 8 p.m. Those are the podcasts. That gives us time to go to church and uh, still be there in that live chat with you guys that evening. So I hope you're in taking full advantage of that. And definitely sign up to get notified when we're doing our podcast. They're on all major platforms. Go rate us five star on your favorite podcast platform. And there'll be tons of great episodes appearing there. We've got some awesome interviews as well as some great informational uh, things to listen to there on our podcast. What about the cool podcast we've had recently? I mean, we've got the Indiana Jones of plants with Plant Botany, a guy who went out there and wild collected. Douglas Justice went out and did some amazing stuff going out into the wild or places it seems like no one else has ever been and bringing plants back to North America. I think that was a super interesting one. I love bringing something different there. Uh, you know, we, we reached the pinnacle of the mountain. We did 
interview Talon Buckholtz this year. So definitely check that podcast out. We've had some amazing interviews with Grumpy Gardner. Recently, we just had Jim Putnam. Yeah, Steve Bender. Uh, some great stuff going on there. We've had Tom Cox of the Cox Arboretum on the show. We've had Augustin Coelho Vera, who's the president of the International Maple Society. And then just recently, Tim and I sat down with Jay Sifford and talked to him about designing gardens with Japanese maples. He's one of the top garden design guys in the entire country. And uh, he knows his stuff when it comes to Japanese maples and garden design. So we've been bringing some premium level content to you there. Uh, again, if you want to watch the video formats, those are Sunday nights at 8. The, typically, the audio format is up Saturdays. You didn't even mention the how-tos. We've got some great how-to videos when it comes to Japanese maples, how to grow Japanese maples, the Area 51 collection here at Mr. Maple. And we're going to keep bringing you some really cool, interesting content on that podcast. So make sure you go to your favorite podcast platform and get subscribed to our podcast because it's a fun way to enjoy Japanese maples. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you being passionate and crazy about these amazing plants just like we are. It means we get to keep making the content we like and we keep, to keep doing what we love, which is uh, you know, providing rare and unusual colorful plants. So thanks for being a part of that. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.